I'm kicking off today's episode on a bit of a sombre note. A cosplayer by the name of Matty Moore, or a Ditsy Rose, on Twitter has unfortunately passed away. He was rushed into emergency surgery, he was in hospital for insomnia and anxiety reasons, and the more I, I scrolled, it was horrific. I didn't know Matty personally, or even professionally. I, I didn't know about his cosplay until the news came out. But seeing so many other cosplayers and creators singing his praises uh, when when the news came out saying, oh my god, I, I knew him and he was amazing uh, and such a lovely person, it just made it all the more heartbreaking. Again, I didn't know him, but from what I have heard about him, it, it's exactly what the community show is about. Amazing people in this community, so... Uh, there's not much I know uh, what to do here, there's not much that can be done, unfortunately, but this uh, episode is dedicated to Matty Moore. On with the show. Hello. And welcome to episode 12 of The Community Show. We are at the second to last episode. I know, there's only two episodes left. Why must life be so cruel? But sadness aside, let's catch up. Firstly, I know who I'm interviewing. It is the lovely Connor Atkins, the artist who you might recognise from certain Phantom Films events and pieces like... Where did I put it? Well, I did have his McCoy piece. I think I've I've stored it somewhere. <laughs> We've had this booked in for about two months, so it's good to finally get round to it. It's a shame it's not in person, but what can you do? Next, I met up with the fabulous Katie Haynes. So that was fun. She was in London for a good few weeks. Uh, she messaged me asking if we wanted to meet up and yes. Me and Abby Louise, or AKA Abby of Traken headed up, took some pictures, did a funny video or two. Most of them are on their TikToks, as I don't do a lot of TikToks. We spent a solid like six hours together. It was busy, but it was really fun. Katie is an absolute delight, as is her boyfriend and yeah, Terrific. If you don't already follow Katie on, on social medias and stuff, go seek her out, because absolute delight. And yes, of course I cosplayed up. She cosplayed up. I had to cosplay up. It was... Uh, come on now. Speaking of that Katie Haynes trip, I offhandedly mentioned that I would love to go to the Who shop one day, which is sort of uh, not central central London, but it's in London. And Katie and her boyfriend happened to already have been there and spoken uh, extensively with the owners. And so was, as soon as I said that, they were like, okay, we're going there. And I said, ah, okay. So we went there. And it was amazing. I bought the Abbey Shot Celery Pin for my Peter Davison, which I've been wanting to get for ages now, so I finally have that. And now I can run twice as fast, because I have a fake bit of celery that cost me far too much. The strange choices I've made because of this daft show. Mustache! <laughs> oh, I fell over. And because Katie's just so nice, she actually bought me a ticket to the museum behind the shop where they store a bunch of original... Uh, originally used in the show costumes and props and oh my god dude the owners were so kind in giving us a tour I know I mean we pay for it but oh my god thank you Katie for that that was an incredible and if you haven't been to the who shop please go uh, here's the address uh, here's the on and there's also a link to the online store below check them out there it's absolutely incredible they've been going for like 40 years and they still have a, sto a shop front Katie also happened to do an advert for the who shop so I I've emailed asking if they want to you know, you know, they want to do something with us, you know what I'm saying? You know? And then before we get onto the show, the Whovian's Choice Awards is something I am doing. If, if you didn't see the video I put out last week, uh, I'm very excited for it. The link to that is also at the top of the description. Uh, essentially, it's voting for your favourite audio production, uh, fan film or what have you, uh, actor, actress, uh, artist, cosplayers uh, from this year. So if you want to get involved, if you have people you want to nominate, do that. Follow, follow the link below. And without further ado, let's get on to episode 12. Oh, this is going to be a, a deep and introspective one. No, it's not. It's, it's business as usual, just in a new coat. We are kicking off the fan film segment with something I don't often get to see. 
a fifth Doctor fan film. I don't see a lot of fifth Doctor fan films. I like seeing new things. This one is a Halloween special, so I'm a couple weeks late, but that's okay. It is called The Entity of Halloween by Nikki Boy Crow, and here's a little clip. Get it here. Well, I suppose I must. Quick, get him in here. And finally, in the fan film section, I know it's sad to see just two in the fan film segment. Sorry, I nearly broke my light trying to lean on it casually. Procession <laughs> by the ever talented 3D Doctor Who. Is there nothing he can't do? Probably Cybermen, I challenge you. But, I mean, his talent speaks for itself. I'm not going to show a clip for this one, though. Because the visuals are enough here. Moving on, you've got to check it out yourself. Ha <laughs> ha! Next! <laughs> audios. <laughs> what are they doing? Those cheeky audios. What do they think they are? Big finish? That's terrible. You don't have official license. Go to prison. Firstly, there's a Torchwood audio series called... Day one. Torchwood season one. Episode one. A lot of ones. This is by Gormako and it gets me excited because it's got the Zygons in it. I do like the Zygons, but why were they the, the sort of main threat in, in Day of the Doctor? I know they were technically the B-plot, but the fact they were in it as much as they were confuses me. But yes, go and check this out. Give it a listen. Here's a little clip. Uh, there's so much neon. It's hurting my eyes. Don't bash the aesthetic. I think it's beautiful. Very retro. I do believe my sister is in the food court. Come on! Oh, Alice! Hi! Lily! How are you? These are my friends and co-workers, Vivian, Peter, and Lydia. Hey! Thank you! Next, there is the Candy Factory by Gormack again. How did I miss that? Well, either way, this is a Doctor Who thing, not a Torchwood thing, so... You get this one, boy! Nearly broke my glasses doing that. Not gonna spend too long on this one, because I already shouted you out, Gormack, you cheeky cheeky boy. Or girl. Clip. <laughs> Look, it's coming to the end of a series, man. I'm a tired boy. I've got a lot- I'm, I'm very busy. Gormack! It is good, though, from what I hear. I, I haven't listened to the whole of this one, but it, it, listen it sounds pretty good. Here's a clip. It's magnificent. Who can take a sunrise, sprinkle it with dew? Okay then, should we just go to wherever the factory is to keep this little, um, plot moving? Aw, but this is fascinating. And a good song too. Well, we can always hear it on DVD. Next is something I was quite excited to shout out, and I feel like I should be in, a, in, in an impression to talk about it. It's not an audio production per se, but it is a podcast, a brand new podcast, brought to you by Chris Walker Thompson, the famous impersonator. He's probably famous. I knew him, so he's probably well known. It is the more than just an impression podcast where he brings on other impressionists and has a nice little chat. And his first guest is the incredible Jonathan Carley, who is doing work for a big finish as the War Doctor. And any Doctor Who fan will get super excited at the fact that episode two will have John Colshaw. A very popular Doctor Who impressionist, and general impressionist. He did a very good Ricky Gervais once. But yes, go and check this podcast out. It's a great meeting of the minds. Or really, meeting of the vocal cords. Well, so, they, so they really did role. They really did sort of coach you towards yeah. before the recording. Which is, as far as I'm aware, is unheard of. Because um, you know, these stepping stones going from that Zoom chat with Nick Briggs to the audition to that workshop it was like thinking at each stage have i blown it have i blown it and then this next breadcrumb coming along <laughs> i think okay yeah. that's not bad news so I'll, I'll just go on that. and then we went from um a couple of days went past after the workshop and then they said we're gonna go and record a box set and finally friends of the show spectral horizons have a new audio adventure trailer out 
for the Trion's Mind. The Trion's Mind? I'm not a fifth Doctor fan. <laughs> Sound the alarm, Jack had an opinion! But jokes and japes aside, Spectral Horizons has made it clear that quality is their passion, and uh, anything that's not got good uh, quality in it, it, it shall be burned alive! Excellent trailer. <laughs> and definitely worth checking out. And also check out the rest of Spectral Horizons catalogue. It is... We can stop it. I promise you. Stop it! No! Is he dead? Then? I can assure you it's sound choice. Who's to say you're not twisting everything you say? The Tryon's Mind by the Oncoming Rainbow. That's the audio section done. Let's move on to the next section. Ah. Hello, I'm William Hartnell, and welcome to my Minecraft Let's Play. Let's see. William Henry Hartnell. It's my world. Susan put me up to this idea, you see. And, um, well, I think it's rather good. I've got a lot of personality I'd like to, to get out into the world. Oh, let's play. I'm going to be the next PewDiePie or Market Player. Jarvis hasn't got the best computer, so you may have to bear with me as uh, everything loads around me. <laughs> oh, now, come on. I've got places to be, you know. Chumley is to save. Ah, perfect. There we go. This is Bill Hartnell's world. <laughs> so, I see a lot of trees. This is good. Hardly the barren wasteland of Scarlet we're dealing with. <laughs> you know, they could have just been in the rockies and left. That's all I'm saying. So, Chesterfield gave me one tip, and that's to beat wood. Now, I'm not entirely sure if he was joking, but let's, let's find out. So, you punch, 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 punch the wood, and... Oh! Look at that! Oh, I've got a bad slug! I prefer a bit of spruce myself, but you guess what uh, the cards are dealt with, as they say. Well, I, I've gotten some wood, that's, that's good. Um, so let me just spam some some buttons here. Social inter what does that mean? Spam some some buttons here. Oh! Oh, who's that handsome chap? I quite like him. I'm a time lord. I figured out how to time travel, more or less. I can figure out a silly little computer game for children. <laughs> so funny to there. Oh! Oh, some, some birchy planks! Oh, and I've got some recipes. Okay, so I've got some planks. Oh, I get some flowers for Susan. A little pond. A little pond. There's no ducks in this pond. Sorry, I think I just had a flash from a future incarnation. That was peculiar. Duck pond! Now, oh, out. Now, Chesterfield also gave me one other bit of advice that is to go straight down. There is no staircase or, or elevator or lift, uh, if you're American or British. Uh, so I, I, I just have to dig straight down. We just start here and we'll, we'll see how we go. I think Chesterfield was kidding that time. Oh, and uh, Barbara gave me a lovely little bit of advice. That is to go into the ocean, right? And we're going to go in here. Oh, look at some fishes! <laughs> and the fun thing, this is a video game. So you don't have to breathe. You can just be under here for, really, forever. And, well, then it's no problem. Hello, little fish! Oh, that is adorable! I'm going to speak with the fishes forever! <laughs> oh, hang on a minute. No, 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 what's happening? Oh, I'm losing some hearts. If I go deeper, perhaps. No, oh, oh, goodness. Oh, no! 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 No, please! Susan! <laughs> Join me next time when we play Portal 2. Art. What beauty lies within mere drawing. Andy Drews! I've known about Andy Drews for a while, and he happened to do some commissions of these cool Battles in Time-esque cards. 
And of course I got one of my own. Why wouldn't I? <laughs> and I love it. I love it. I think I saw his um, Rory Dobson one first that he did for, you know, the, boy, the little boy that dresses like a Dalek. I've interviewed him in the past. He's awesome. So I was like, I want one of those. And so I got one. Love it, Andy Drews. Top of the class. A star. Thank you. Next, there is Cosmic Shine, and I have no idea which one to pick from, because they're all awesome. If there's a 12th Doctor one, I'll slap it on there, because I I've scrolled through all of them. Uh, you know, sometimes it's easy to find the one that sort of stands above the rest. No, all of yours are too good, so I've just picked a 12th Doctor one, presumably. <laughs> but I mean, what needs to be said? They're all amazing, like the comic cover ones. Incredible. Blows my mind. And finally, there is the aptly named for the Twelfth Doctor episode, Penguin with its arse on fire. Terrific. I don't know what Phil was on about. <laughs> Send help. I've clearly gone insane. Also known as Tiff, who did this piece with Twelve, and I love it. How you doing? I'm perfectly fine, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an absolute pleasure to uh, to meet you, really for the second time, as we have uh, bumped into each other yes. at a Phantoms event. Yes, definitely. You... And again, thank you very much for the compliments on my artwork at the time. It goes without saying, I can see one of my favourites to the side there, um, and it's absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal, the detail in it. How did you get started doing art? It kind of all started towards the end of my last year of sixth form, which was, for the record, is in 2014. I'd been studying art, really, in both GCC and in my A-levels, and I really hadn't thought of a particular route that I wanted to go down, really. In April of 2014, Planet Events, which unfortunately is, it, which was a signing company that is no longer with us, unfortunately, they were holding an event in Barking, and one of the guests they had was Colin Baker. So my mum said to me for the event, Connor, why don't you go ahead and draw a picture of um, Colin Baker? Because he, he might like it. I was like, okay. And in about four hours, I did a very quick black and white picture of Colin Baker, which I've got right here, actually. Convenient. Which is this one right Oh, here? yeah, just a very quick, just sort of smacking it out. Yeah, four hours, bosh. It was four hours. I timed it. <laughs> I've been doing that sort of thing from then on and to further expand on why on on this type of artwork as to why i do what i do for the record before i go ahead and say, go ahead and say anything that anything that might offend anyone i i absolutely respect any and all type form types of artwork but this is just from my personal perspective i remember watching a you know those time lapse videos where you see speed runs of um of of, of where, where you start on a picture and then what the final product would end up looking yeah. like I saw that and there was a gentleman, I can't remember what the name of the channel is, but he used multiple tools he did. So it was watercolor, pencil, oil paint, airbrush, all sorts of stuff like that. And what he came up with this absolutely beautiful picture, believe it or not, I believe it was just a Nutella, believe it or not. And I saw that, I thought to myself, I, I love, love what he's doing. But is it not possible to draw that, just draw something like that, but just by using one medium? I resolved myself to thinking, yes, I'm pretty sure you can. And so I've essentially done this primarily out of where I started from in terms of uh, what, uh, under circumstance of me, me going, going to meet Colin Baker, but also out of, also partly out of stubbornness, really. You've set yourself a challenge. Yeah, I've been adamant of sticking to my own, oh, my, one set of tools which for the record it's all in pencil for those watching how many pencils do you own because the amount of different shades and different colors you'd need for just that piece alone my main set of tools right here so for the record for what i use it's derwin well they're called fine art pencils on the sides of them they actually say if i just pull this up to the camera so it says derwin color soft it's like show and tell. <laughs> I've seen pretty much all of your pieces at this point, and like, you know, I see the Madame de Pompadour and Colin Baker specifically, and I have to wonder what's been the trickiest so far because they're my goodness. Okay, I've got three. Madame de Pompadour was hard because of the detail in that dress. That was so yeah. tricky, and the other two are Peter Capaldi one-off monsters, being the Foretold and the Fisher King. 
the thing is that I just like setting myself a challenge, really. Here's a, a sort of more random question, because, I, I mean, I, I'm one of those people that tried art. You know, I did it for a good while, and then I sort of tapered out. And one thing I always struggled with was not necessarily the clothes or, or sort of the body. It was always the face. Would you say that's sort of a common hurdle? Honestly, because I, know, I take my stuff to conventions and I sell them, I want it to look like the person I intend it to look like. Yeah. So I get I get that. Again, I, re- I just really want to get people's faces correct down, down and correct, really. So it's just a case of looking looking at the... Because um, I've got the image in front of me, I have, and I'm looking back, back and forth constantly thinking, maybe I just need to adjust that a little bit just to get it right, maybe rub that back a little bit. I've got two golden rules I should mention reg- regarding my artwork. The harder something is, the more likely I am to enjoy myself. And... No matter the circumstance, whoever your favourite character is, they are going to be the hardest, <laughs> irregardless of that. Circling back to the fandom events, for example, how did you get started doing conventions and selling your artwork? I didn't start going to conventions until 2013. I just started draw- drawing and it, just a four pictures of each person I was going to meet, really, when I went to events, as was shown in that book I just pulled up. Eventually, I did catch the eyes of the Tenth Planet Company and just said, just to have something a bit different, they put my... Um, at one point, they put my artwork out for fans to get signed in front of the... Um, desks i wasn't being paid for it but at the time i really didn't mind really eventually uh 10th planet closed uh uh closes doors to doing signings they've still got an online shop for the record i eventually ventured over to phantom who again shout out to dex and paul by the way who are the owners of phantom events i first of all started going to signings and i started get, catching the crew's attention really with my artwork and also another item which I typically get signed signed at the event. Eventually, my mum came along with me. She became part of the crew. It took a bit of convincing to get me to do, to get me to do some journey because I was a bit sceptical about a couple of things, such as copyright and whatnot. But I did eventually have my first stall in Pandorica of 2019, August signing, if I remember rightly, and a fan had come up to me because I was on the front table, not selling my prints, but I was selling pictures for, for the signing. And he said to me, when are you going to draw a picture of Douglas Canfield as the Doctor? I said to him, if I'm going to draw Douglas Canfield, I'd rather draw him as, as a director with all the stories that he um, that he's responsible for directing. After he left, it just so happened that Dex was sat next to me when that happened. So Dex then said to me, how long does it take you to generally draw something? And I said, oh, it entirely depends on what I've got to draw. And he said to me, do you want to draw um, the new book co- front cover for Douglas for the re-release of Douglas Canfield's biography? And so naturally, I said yes. Well, you would. Douglas Canfield is my favourite director of Doctor Who, so that, I mean, that's got to feel you got to feel pretty proud about that. I was I was I was on a high in 2020. I was mm. absolutely I was absolutely enjoying myself in, in that year. Speaking of your fabulous artwork, perhaps a more standard question, but do you have a favourite so far that you've done? I refuse to answer that question and i'll explain why imagine right if you had three or more children and i were to line them up on a wall in front of you and i were to tell you yeah could you pick a favorite for me and they were listening very carefully (laughs) answer that question could you answer that question yeah, I think you've. I think I completely understand your point. So you consider your artwork your children. You you rest them down into the cot every night. You give them a little kiss. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Finally, if people were wanting to find your artwork around, if they wanted a piece for yourself, I've said multiple occasions. As soon as I get the money that I want, that heaven sent one. Uh, to where would people go to look? At the moment, I'm only selling at events at the moment this is unfortunately a small issue with me is that i'm going to use a doctor who story as an example which is nikola tesla's night night of terrors tesla was a genius but he wasn't a businessman like thomas edison was so he was more more in it for the science than he was in for the money right so at the moment i'm only doing events at the moment i've not i've not tweeted this out yet or anything but i'm only planning on doing four events next year if you want to get a piece of artwork off of me the events you would you would be best to catch me at are bedford hoocon hooverville 
Utopia and Pandorica. You're going to hate me here, but I'm cutting this interview quite short. But if you want to hear a brilliant story about Tom Baker asking for his address, as well as Colin Baker being his professional hype man, go check out the full interview. Trust me, it is hilarious <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the show connor it's been an absolute pleasure chatting away to you you as well jack and again for the record this is being recorded after uh, after pandorica 2021 and is and you've you've already tweeted out the um your your poll for best uh actor or yeah, audio yeah, drama yeah. or I I'm not voting because technically I am eligible for what for one of them I am so I'm going to keep myself out of that but yeah, uh, good luck to all of the Oxford community. Very well done for the year. You've made 2021 a much more bearable time. Some ideas are good and some ideas are bad. Let's find out which one this is. I am going to take a piece of costume from every single Doctor, 1 to 13, not uh, War Doctor or Joe Martin, sorry. And we're going to see how they look combined. Do you like this shirt, by the way? It's from the Doctor Who Poop Store. Available now. It's also created by Bo. We all love Bo. The only thing I'm going to add, uh, just as a base, is a shirt. A nice white shirt. Because why not? Honestly, do you have a reason why not? Keep it to yourself. I'm going to be so hot after this. So, first one. First Doctor is the best thing he ever wore. The wig. And I have actually a screen accurate first Doctor wig. Look. That's exactly the one he wore. Number two, Mr. Troughton, is his bow tie. A nice, a nice small Velcro dicky bow. I don't know how to tie a bow tie, but then again, does anyone? Already, I can tell this is a good idea. Number three, Mr. Pertwee, I have chosen his red jacket. Oh, I like this jacket. Hello, cosplay fresh. Oh, I'll leave it undone for now. I'm the new James Bond. I've gone for his Abbey Shot Painter's Pin lapel. I got this recently. I'll leave it here and I'll save it for the end because I don't know how many, how many layers I'll be wearing. <laughs> Number five, I've gone for the obvious, his jumper. Here we go, oh, are we cooking now, boys? Oh, literally. Oh, this is stylish. This is gonna be on, on fashion runway. Number six, yellow trousers. I should add lines to these. Uh, excuse me a moment. Trousers. Number seven, I've gone for his hat. <laughs> I don't know why the addition of that just makes it even funnier. How do you do? I'm on my way to croquet. Balls. Number eight, I've gone for his cravat from the TV movie. I'm, all, I'm already wearing... A bow tie, so what I'm gonna do is like a frontward tail. No, that's terrible. I need. <laughs> but you know, Trouton always had stuff sticking out of his pockets, so why don't I have a cravat sticking out of mine? There you go. That's a bit better. That's less like a willy. <laughs> Number nine, I've chosen. Oh, I've chosen his boots. Oh, I'm gonna have to sit down for this. You know, most people on their days off, you know, on the nice weekend, they, they relax, maybe they go out. And here's me doing this. You know, sometimes you have to just, you have to wonder your place in the universe and whether you, what you're doing to contribute to society. And then you just sort of have to cry. Boots on. Oh, I feel taller. Number 10, I've gone for his tie, his Day of the Doctor tie. There we go. So I've got cravat this side, tie this side. Excellent. Number 11, we're nearly there. Gone for his braces. So, Jack is gonna have to come off again. Yeah, there's one at the back that just doesn't like to stay fastened. Here we go. That's, oh, they've, it's a bit skew if. Ah, whatever. Oh yeah. Twelve's glasses. Oh yeah, here we go, lads. How you doing? And then finally, for number 13. Oh, it's run out of battery. Oh wait, the pin. I can't see. Oh, nearly stabbed myself in the finger. Oh, that's fully bent. Oops. Oh. Hello! Wait, no. Hello! I am the doctor!
Spectre! Russell T Davis has cast me as number 14 in the next series and this is what you've got! Accept it now or die! Cosplay, cosplay, cosplay! Cosplay, cosplay, cosplay! Cosplay. First up is a name I'm not sure how to pronounce, so this will go well. The Telenov 98. <laughs> That's terrible. It's here. He's a Matt Smith cosplayer who manages to edit himself into the backgrounds. How? What? Seriously? Also, look at that hair. Come on now. Come on. It's so good. He happened to pop up on my Instagram feed and he's well worth a follow. Go and follow him. It's amazing. Next is one I can pronounce, Cosplayer Tiff. She cosplays a smattering of doctors as well as Rose Tyler among others and just seems like she's having an absolute ball with it and that's the kind of creators I like. The people who are clearly just having fun. Hell yeah, can relate. Hashtag relatable. And then finally in the cosplay section, sort of a duo because a funny little story happened. Well I say story, it's it's barely an anecdote. There is a 13th Doctor cosplayer here, Anne, as well as a Yasmin Khan cosplayer, Lana. They both followed me at the exact same time, and their profile pictures were remarkably similar, and I thought that was really funny. And so I messaged both of them being like, oh, do you want to be featured in the in the community show? And they were like, yeah, by the way, we are, we are dating, we're, we're girlfriends. And I was like, oh, that makes more sense. That's coincidence, finding me at the same time. No, they're dating. Okay, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> but they both look absolutely incredible. Makes for quite the duo. Go and give them both a follow. They look wicked. Also, Flux. Hey, at Flux, maybe could you not? Me and Yaz were going about the universe having some fun. I was looking for a dog man. It's no big deal. Common Easter, best boy. I love him. We even had a nice bedspread laid out. Don't ask me why, it's my personal business. But then all of a sudden this flat came out of nowhere and started ruining my day, and ruining the time stream, ruining space. And then I'm looking into mirrors and I'm seeing a completely different person. Then there's this bloody swarm guy. What the hell's going on there? I'm going insane. I've only watched up to episode two as this goes out, uh, as I'm filming this rather. Uh, I, I wasn't too big on the episode one. Uh, mainly because it's a lot of setup and doesn't really work. Offensive plane doesn't really work with the uh, without the context of the rest, in my opinion. Episode two slapped. War of the Sontarans. More Sontarans, please. It was so good. Also, I didn't like Dan at first. But with the double act of him and Carvin Easter, I love him more and more. He's just a lovable dumbass, isn't he? What's the point in being alive? Love you, John Bishop. You strange man. I can't see without the sunglasses now. There we go. <laughs> I'm blind! But yes, Anne and Lana. Excellent duo cosplayers. Moving on to the next thing. <laughs> I hate to see you go, but I love to watch you leave. We are at the end of episode 12, and I look very white. My god, I should turn the exposure down. Is that better? I'm just going to assume that's better. L other, uh, other promotions. Firstly, I don't know whether to count this, but I thought it looked cool. Inside a Blackpool posted this of their light-up Dalek and TARDIS display, and... Yeah, if you're in Blackpool, go check this out. I think my mum and my sister actually uh, went and had a look, and they made me very jealous. Then there is Mr. Tardis doing a charity live stream on November 23rd from, I believe it is, 9am to 9pm, so a good old 12 hours. He has dubbed it the 1963 live stream, and he has a lot of exciting stuff planned, and I know he's going to be bringing guests on. I have asked him if, I, he, if he wants me. I haven't heard back yet. He must hate me. <laughs> It is for the film and TV charity, which I know is near and dear to his heart as he's uh, in the industry and he's obviously a big fan of the industry. He reviews stuff. He, he, one doesn't really exist without the other. So go to his channel on the 23rd of November and make sure you do your bit and give some money to the charity. I know I will be. I don't know how much yet. Depends how... I mean, it's Christmas time. Uh, I'm spending a lot of money. But I know I, I always make time and money for charity, as should you. So... Do the thing. Next is Who Game Shows I've shouted out a couple of times before, and they've given me an exclusive trailer to show off, so why the why the hell am I talking? Cut to that! This Christmas on Who Game Shows. 
Daft Punk hosts as money flies. The weakest link. You disconnect, is that better? Your USB, not your ass. Who wants to be a millionaire? Squat final answer. In an epic two-parter. Over 400 pounds won. Who will reign victorious? Not 100% sure. Find out this Christmas on Who Game Shows when good men go to war. I love it when I get exclusives. It's it's big for the ego. And that little bit at the end, a Jack Reeves exclusive. Hilarious. Finally, on the theme of charity for Mr. Tardis, there is a charity book. I shan't talk much about it. I'll just show you a few of the uh, preview pages that I was sent. It is called Tales of Time, and it looks like it's going to be absolutely terrific. I will certainly be buying one myself. Uh, thank you to the guy who sent it my way. I always try to make time for stuff like this, and... Yeah, go and check it out. And with that, that ends episode 12. We've only got one episode to go of the year. It's going to be an exciting time. I'll see you in episode 13. Bye-bye. <laughs>